Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of the collision involving a Colorado police officer who parked on railroad tracks? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the timeline of the incident, then move to my analysis. On September 16, 2022, the police in Platteville, Colorado, received a 911 call about an alleged road rage incident involving a firearm. Platteville is about one hour north of Denver. A Platteville police officer pulled up behind a pickup truck driven by a 20-year-old suspect named Irene Rios Gonzalez. The officer turned on his emergency lights to pull her over. Rios Gonzalez stopped for the officer after turning off of U.S. Route 85 onto County Road 36. A set of railroad tracks runs parallel to U.S. Route 85, about 40 feet from the road. Therefore, it crosses County Road 36. The pickup truck stopped just after these railroad tracks. The Platteville police officer stopped his patrol vehicle, a full-size SUV, on the railroad tracks. These railroad tracks were in service, not dormant. This is a flat rural area where someone can see for a long distance in every direction. There were no lights or gates of any type at the railroad crossing, but there were signs posted. People in the area are required to use common sense about crossing the tracks. A Fort Lupton police officer arrived on the scene to assist the Platteville police officer. Fort Lupton is a small town about 13 minutes south of Platteville. She responded to the scene because this was considered a high-risk traffic stop. As it turns out, it was very high-risk, but not because of the suspect. The Fort Lupton officer walked up behind the Platteville officer's SUV and could clearly see that the SUV was parked on the railroad tracks. She opened the passenger door of the SUV and used it as a shield. She was standing right on the tracks. She appeared to be quite disturbed by the number of insects flying around her. Perhaps she should have been worried about a heavier problem in the area. At 7.51 p.m., Rios Gonzalez exited her pickup truck after being ordered to do so at gunpoint by the Platteville officer. The Fort Lupton officer moved around the back of the SUV after another Fort Lupton officer arrived on the scene. The second Fort Lupton officer was carrying a rifle. At 7.52 p.m., the female officer handcuffed Rio Gonzalez and placed her in the Platteville officer's SUV. The suspect was being detained on suspicion of felony menacing. All three officers then searched the pickup truck, first looking for other people, then looking for a firearm that may have been involved in the alleged road rage incident. At some point, the officer with the rifle stopped searching the pickup truck and made his way near the SUV parked on the tracks, the one containing Rios Gonzalez. As the other two officers continued to search the pickup truck, they were talking about how the suspect may have thrown a gun out of the window prior to being pulled over. As they were talking, a train horn can be heard in the distance. The officers continued to talk as if they did not hear the horn. They did not realize how they were on the fast track to disaster. Not surprisingly, the horn was attached to a moving train, specifically a northbound train operated by Union Pacific. Undoubtedly, the train engineer was using the horn as a method to attract attention to the fact that a vehicle was parked in the path of the train. After being oblivious for several seconds, all the officers suddenly realized there was a train coming down the tracks. The female officer shouted an expletive. The officer with the rifle, who was near the SUV on the tracks, can be seen moving away from the tracks, stopping, and then continuing to move away from the tracks as he yelled, move your vehicle and stay back. Just after this, the train slammed into the Platteville patrol vehicle. The SUV came to rest off to the side of the tracks several hundred feet away. The Platteville officer can be heard repeatedly asking the female police officer, was she in there? The female officer eventually answers, yes, she was. The Platteville officer offered expletives in response. 
he knew that there was no way he was going to be able to cover his tracks. The officers can be seen running toward the SUV, which had been badly damaged by the collision with the train. Rios Gonzalez was taken to the hospital. She had a number of injuries, including nine broken ribs, a broken leg, a broken arm, a broken sternum, and broken teeth. She was released from the hospital about a week later. Her attorney says that he expects to file a lawsuit on her behalf within the next few months. Separate investigations are continuing regarding the alleged road rage incident and the incident with the train. At the time making this video, no charges have been filed against anyone involved in this case. The Platteville police officer is on administrative leave. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Rios Gonzalez was pulled over for an alleged road rage incident. The Platteville officer claimed that she took a long time to stop and may have thrown a weapon out of the vehicle during that time. He did not see her throw a weapon out of the vehicle. The police found a holster and a cartridge in her vehicle, but no firearm. I can understand why the police thought this was a high-risk stop. Item number two, Rios Gonzalez stopped her vehicle just after the railroad tracks, which meant that the Platteville police officer needed to stop his SUV before the tracks. Instead, he parked on the railroad tracks. He may have been highly focused on the high-risk stop and not aware of where he ended up parking. However, it was his responsibility to maintain situational awareness. Under no circumstances should he have stopped on the railroad tracks. Even if he left his vehicle empty, he was jeopardizing the lives of everybody on the train. If the officer is somehow given a pass for stopping there because he may have been distracted, he still could have moved the vehicle after Rios Gonzalez was taken into custody. Instead, he casually searched her pickup truck along with the other officers. Which brings me to item number three. Why did the female police officer and the officer with the rifle not tell the Platteville officer that his vehicle was parked on the tracks? I'm not sure what they were thinking, or if they were thinking at all, but here's a theory about what could have happened. Police officers often adopt an us-against-the-world mentality. Therefore, they are reluctant to challenge each other. They don't like to criticize each other. They are worried about alienating the only group that they feel they can count on. Sometimes in an effort to prove their loyalty, they actually support each other more diligently when an officer makes a bad decision. When the female officer noticed that the SUV was on the railroad tracks, she decided to support that dangerous decision by putting the suspect in that vehicle. She was doubling down on the mistake and reinforcing it. Item number four, another explanation for the flippant attitude toward the railroad tracks may be explained by the obsession police officers have with dominating situations. Completely dominating every aspect of a situation is rarely necessary for a police officer. An excessive effort to dominate can actually lead to problems. For example, in this situation, the police certainly needed to dominate the suspect, but trying to dominate the freight train was futile, unwise, and overly ambitious. The freight train was not going to respect the authority of the officers, mostly because of the laws of physics. Trains need a very long distance to stop, sometimes a mile or more. I don't know if the officers thought that once the engineer saw the flashing lights, the train would be brought to a stop. I realize these officers probably didn't graduate from the Albert Einstein Police Academy, but they had to know that a freight train is not as nimble as a sports car. There's the sense that the officers would have arrested the engineer if they could have for not respecting their authority. This was a situation where the desire of the officers to dominate was extreme, and they believed in their own ability and right to be in complete control. Item number five. As I mentioned, after the collision, the Platteville police officer asked the female officer if the suspect was in the vehicle. She eventually confirmed that she was. The way she said it sounded as though she just realized that in the moment, despite the fact that she placed Rios Gonzalez in that vehicle knowing it was on the railroad tracks. That occurred just a few minutes earlier. I find it almost impossible to believe that the officer forgot where Rios Gonzalez was. She knew the entire time where she put the suspect. Acting surprised is not going to help that officer escape the consequences of her behavior. 
Item number six, some people suggested that the officers involved were cowards for not trying to get Rios Gonzalez out of the police vehicle. Specifically, the officer with the rifle looked like he was thinking about helping, but then he ran away. I think in reality, he was trying to warn the other officers. I don't think he seriously considered trying to save the suspect because at that point, he was already out of time. The critical mistakes the officers made were irreversible. If that officer had returned to the SUV, he would have been hit by that train as well. Item number seven, should the officers involved in this case be charged with criminal offenses? Here are my thoughts on this. This is just a theory, my opinion. I do not think that the officer with the rifle committed a criminal offense, although he was certainly negligent. Any officer on that scene who didn't say something about the SUV on the tracks would have been negligent. I think the blame should be split mostly between the Platteville officer and the female Fort Lupton officer. They both made unwise decisions that contributed to the tragedy. In my opinion, their behavior was beyond negligent. It was reckless. Therefore, I think they should be charged criminally. Some people have suggested that this was nothing short of an attempted murder. I think that might be taking this a little too far, although I can appreciate that point of view. I don't think there is a realistic chance of them being convicted of attempted murder. They each have some type of excuse. For example, the Platteville officer can say that the suspect stopped in a bad place. This confused him. And the female officer can blame the Platteville officer. She can say that any place that he parked his vehicle should have been safe. In addition, she can say that she was distracted by all those insects. It's a weak defense for both of them but probably enough to show that there was no intent. However, there's no way they can defend against the idea that they were reckless. If the officers are charged with a crime, I'm sure they will complain that they are getting railroaded, but as far as their defense, I think that train has already left the station. Item number eight, what is the solution to this problem? How could this train wreck have been prevented? I think the problem comes back to the tendency to dominate. These officers believe that they were in charge of everything, absolutely nothing was outside of their control. In addition to this, this case could involve critical thinking skills, as in these officers didn't have any. This case exemplifies the dangers of a one-track mind. Those are my thoughts on the Colorado train collision. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.